Ya. 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 to go a maroon town. I used to go there and buy pear and things like that, you know. And the maroon people is just like the Garifuna people in Belize here. You know. Said food they eat, said where them operate, you know. The Garifuna people and the maroon people are the same people, are one type of people. These are the Garifunas of Central America. They have come from Belize, they have come from Honduras, they have come from blue fields in Nicaragua to come and celebrate with their Garifuna brothers in Guatemala. They have come to pay tribute and homage to their fallen leader, Chatue, who died defending Garifuna in St. Vincent. In the celebration of African cultural continuity, there is no group in the Caribbean who are as similar in history and culture as the Garifunas of Central America and the Maroons of Jamaica. As the Garifunas celebrate their survival in Central America, so does the Maroons celebrate their survival in Jamaica, as is they celebrate the birthday of Kojo and the signing of their peace treaty which ensured the survival of Maroons in Jamaica. Therefore, reflecting a cultural similarity as it does also reflect an African similarity. Pong's oldest water system. This is where the Maroons came and refreshed themselves and, and uh, nourished themselves with the water that uh, is in this community. So you could understand that years ago everything was centered around this watering system. Uh, the cultivation of crops, the cleaning of cells, the cleaning of clothes, gatherings, meetings, uh, literally everything was concentrated around water since water is also the nourishment of life. This is where people came to do laundry, clean themselves and exchange news and talk with each other. You could envision that maroons that surround these mountains came down from different areas to come and uh, socialize and, and refresh and gather at this uh, watering hole. Today, uh, I believe the purposes are still the same, that people do come and wash here and gather here, although in contemporary times as, as is that uh, Maroons now have water in their homes. 
the world is catching up. The British gave a call that they should return to the plantations and be their slaves. But they flatly refused. Because what manner of man would have been in slavery? Be freed and then go back to free, slavery freedom. Therefore, the British, a war start between the British and the people who are known as the Maroons. We could not have fought the British on the plains because their gunpowder was very dangerous against us. Therefore, they took to the hills and mountains of Jamaica. And one such mountain was the Catholic country. And from this mountain hideout, out, a war raged between the people now known as Maroons and the British. And that war went on for over 80 years. And in the process, the British spent £250,000, passes 44 different acts in the Parliament of Jamaica of means and ways of how to get rid of these people. Nonetheless, it all fails. In 1738, they sent back to England for more ammunition, more soldiers, or whatever it can take to see if they can defeat these people. But the king, in his wide sense, going through his records, seeing how much had been spent, how much had been lost, and there was nothing to show for the many years of war. Therefore, on the 24th day of February, in the 12th year of his reign, George II of England granted full powers to John Guthrie and Francis Slatter to come to Jamaica and to make a peace treaty with these people. They met at the peace cave, and on that cave, cave a peace treaty was drawn up, giving the people who are now known as the Maroons free lands to the cockpit country, belongs to the Maroons, and plus 2,500 acres further compensation to the Maroons for winning the war. Hence, we own the cockpit country, and it's our home, and we are proud to be a part of that home. How do you feel when you sit down as a Maroon and think about what happened outside and how that will affect you? Yes. No, but we show them peace, you know. Uh, we celebrate a peace where we will make us supposed to take, take instruction from away. Mm -hmm. So anything they might keep all you go and join them too, you know? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, we involve in them program all there and, and them see how we live up here. We don't commit no murder and no crime up here, so. I mean, they say in the last hundred years there was two murders. Two people died in a hundred years. That's something that the whole world can learn from because... Crime-free the, 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 the crime free in hundred years. The, 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 yeah. the, the, Crime-free community. There's no community like that. And there's no it's fence. only people that conquered the British. You don't have houses that are fenced between them. Just well, walk no from one yard to the other. No theft, no, no crime. In a hundred years, what mm. what black community outside of a rural community right can say here. that? They, they have their own government. They, they set up their own government. They don't pay tax. So the government no, not really interfere with them. I don't unless any. Dangerous thing like murder, cases like those. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I don't know if you know what the government never uses. Well, if you thief, and you go in and uh, accept you. But if you kill somebody and run away, go there and uh, protect you. And this will open, this will open the eyes of the younger generation. And the, the younger generation, the wider world, in the wider world, that when they enter the village of a compound, they wouldn't look in back in the farm and stage of the ancestors. They're looking in a new modern development. Not 
stand here in this spot and say that I come with this I come I come with and we know That's right, he pronounced it right. Yeah, well, that's that's the that's why we, we say Akambo. That's the English version. But his grandmother called him right. You know it. You know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A piece of mine, a piece of mine. It is also here. Akambo turns like a small garden. The ability of Maroons to survive has always been dependent on them seeking out each other. Because people don't know that there's Maroons in North America. What Maroons? Oh, there are Maroons in North America. There's Maroons well, I mean, throughout the Caribbean. Yes, throughout. It's an island where the Maroons took a stand, the Yoruba Maroons took a stand and said they're not going to go no further than this, and they've been on that island every since. Well, Nam Scotia is also the largest indigenous black community in North America, so my family is one of the first black families that were there, and, and I have the land deed to show that we actually had land from 1745. Yeah, but Maroon, that, um, that's when it documented when we were there before that. Black people were actually, Nova Scotia was used as a shipping point for... That was black, the last yeah. capital underground railroad, plus it was there from the beginning of the Middle Passage too. Right, and yeah. because of that, I think the, 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 the different, the English, they shipped different people from lands that they wanted to clear to, 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 to Nova, Nova Scotia. Scotia. Even after the American Revolutionary War, mm -hmm. when the slaves took the side of the British, mm -hmm. and I believe the 1912 War or 1812 War, mm -hmm. They, after the, uh, the slaves fought with the British, they were given their freedom because America didn't want to take them back. So when the British was done with them, mm -hmm. they actually sent them to Nova Scotia. Nova there Scotia, were thousands yeah. of soldiers that went there, plus the Underground Railroad. Then you have the Loyalists, and you have all these different migrations. But obviously the most powerful migration of any group of people would have been the, the Maroons because they're obviously the most... Powerful set powerful, of people. Yeah, powerful, powerful set of people. No one have accomplished yeah, what yeah. the Maroons accomplished in the world. My people were ejected from St. Vincent uh, in the, the island of St. St. Vincent, the Garifuna people, mm -hmm. under the leadership of uh, this guy Chatue, and were sent to Rotan to die on that rock. At some point. And look how you still care. Yeah, you welcome all of us here yeah, to come in and to tell your story, yeah. to tell the world that you can live in harmony, yeah. you can live amongst one another, yeah. you can share food, you can share wheat, you can share anything. Yeah. You understand? Long as you're willing to respect one another. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do up here. Yeah. You got the major thing going, is God said, give unto yourself. Respect. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Pan-African giants like Marcus Garvey, Ahmed Sekuture, and Kwame Nkrumah, I'll say that you could judge the level of a nation's development by looking at the development of its women. African women have always been the backbone of African culture. Here, Sister Liz and Sister Tina goes through a ceremony of bonding in the spirit of African cultural continuity with Sister Liz in Akompongtong, the heights of African love amongst our women in the diaspora. I feel very proud. I feel proud to be a Maroon. I wouldn't be want to be nobody else. I think sky is the limit. I think sky is the limit for us. We can't predict the future right here. God, this is bigger than me. Honestly, bigger than me. I want to see the whole community change, make a whole 360 change. People have money. That's they can have things, you know, send them kids to school, you know, buy food. Does that's them can live beyond the poverty line, over a little edge over the poverty. Whatever else come, we give thanks, we don't take it, you know. How long have you been building this place, Mr. Um, I think we're going at this thing at two years now, right? Yeah, about two years. You've accomplished a lot in two years. You must have a good staff of workers. <laughs> yes, and, yes. and all everybody that uh, all your workers are from this village. Yes, the family unit. Yeah. The whole family unit. Um, I understand that your architect is, is, a, is a woman. Yes. 
in this. Uh, is that strange in Jamaica? I mean, uh, in Akumpong, the kind of liberated mentality where men will accept women to work with them. Well, also. we never really have a woman architect before until now. So I wouldn't say, I, I would have said, it's a, it's a very big move, you know. Yeah. It opened up the eyes of other little girls that they know, say, well, then. There's a lot of things out there that they can't really do. And you facilitated this to the world by yes. hiring a female architect. Exactly. And she drew the plans for this place and construct the workers. Uh, she uh, draw the plans, she do everything. Construct the worker, everything. She, she construct everything. I was told that you are the architect of this construction site, that you built this, uh, you created this. Well, well design, design everything. Right. Right. Um, you're the first woman, I would want to think, in this community that does that kind of work? Well, my first hmm? female. Right, so right. you're not busy, sir. I mean, generally, yes, since, since the last couple of two years you know, now, we start the lady that does construction, but yeah. when we start, the first. You're the first first woman. First, there's first. Uh, there's others now that are doing it since you you opened the doors that kind of yeah. way yeah. created the. Um, um, how difficult is it for you as a woman to do this work, uh, constructing, uh, supervising Jamaican well, men workers? Not really, not really hard, you know, but want to believe in yourself and know yourself. You can't be able to do your work. The regular, the regular issues uh, that like we third world. People always accuse of sexism and disrespect well, towards women and all of that. You think no, you have no, to earn No, 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 you get little disrespect, but I just construction, basically. Mm -hmm. You have to just know to go around the people and know to deal with them mentally, physically. Well, the girl for now, and the maroons in Jamaica actually the same type of people. When I say the same type, I mean they are African, same African people. Actually, have the same mentality, and you know, like that because these people they wear the the, the garf on a clothes, the plaid in Jamaica, the maroon, the same thing. Same black people represent the same culture, maroon from Africa, right? I live in Adan Riga for the past from 1995, experiencing the black culture of this community, you know. We understand that the Indian Africa is not dead in Jamaica. This is African cultural continuity at its best. It might be in Belize, it might be in Honduras, it might be in Africa, it might be in Jamaica. This is African cultural unity. It might be anywhere in the world. This is a reflection of Africa. Don't go to Hamosa. Aba, any hara ge have maroon scoopy, have maroon Jamaican akompong ge hayami. No. Maroon be here go ham. No, I don't go to ham. How do you mean have? It's a long time that you're talking about. Okay. There was no road here. Have you not been here? Yes, my daughter knew that daughter. It was a rail here. They used to use the rail to run their bananas on the port. The Jamaican said Yes, it was the Jamaican said that. Yes, it was the Jamaican said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctor, I really do not refer to myself as a Creole person. I refer to myself rather as an African user. But I live in a community which my people understand the language of Creole and Garifuna, which we all know is definitely just the usual divide and rule tragedy used for many, many years even by ourselves. So with that knowledge, I, I, like I said, I refer to myself as an African Muslim. But in Belize, they would call me a Creole person. That's K-R-I-O-L. Just a brief um, history on the Creole people. And um, one of our artists, Ms. Leela, said, if, if Creole don't have no history, then Belize don't have no history. Something to have nature. I have lived all my life here in Punta Gorda town. And I have been promoting the Creole culture for over 35 to 40 years. I, I'm a Creole, so it's no matter of promotion, but being an activist, I, came out, I come out and I begin to speak on behalf of black people, especially the Belize Creole. I, I can see what part black people are not in any good standings in this country to see that we are here from the 1600s. We were brought 
through the world's human force migration the world may ever know. Slavery. We were meant to be slaves. We were sold by the European masters to enrich their empire. And this continued for seven centuries. Yes? And I am a direct descendant of that, of that, that, that atrocity. No one wants to speak about slavery. That's a, that's a subject that nobody wants to talk about. But that is, that is the subject I like because I'm from that. Uh, I feel very proud not to be biased, not, 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 not of, not, I would say, not for direct from slavery, but I'm proud of who I am and what our contribution mean to this country we call Belize today. The black people of this country were the only ones who came under the whip against our will. And in doing so, this country become a reality. In 1797, on the 1st of June, you had some brothers from Flowers Bank that voted to stay and fight for this country. Because in those days, the Spaniards ruled all over Belize, like they still rule through Mexico and Guatemala and the rest of Central America. The name of these men were just for a moment. Let me share these. We have to share these names. The name of these men were William Craft, David Danson, George Rayburn, Joseph Smith, James Hercules, Caesar Flowers, William Flowers, John Dawson, Thomas Robertson, Joseph Tony, William Pinder, William Scott, George Grant. Adam Flowers, present everybody. These are the men that voted, and that was the genesis of this country, Belize, the colony. Before that, the Mayas lived in Belize. When we were torn off the continent of Africa, many of us were dead. We drowned in the, they drowned in the sea before they got here. We went into serious labor, slave, slavery, for several centuries, and it is, it is, it is not even recorded. Very little has been said about it. And like, no one wants to speak about that. And this country started with that. Arise, ye sons of the Bayman's clan. No longer shall we be yours of wood. We ancestors were the ones who were the yours of wood. Then I made the slave, then made the corner of the cut like wood. You hear about the amount of monies they made, they, they, they made on the, um, uh, the extraction of timber. But then they mentioned that who may do it. Slave. That slavery, like they want to sweep it under the rug. They don't want to hear about that. Some of the, the Africans that were brought here did not want to stay and cut the lagwood. So they ran away to a place we now call Gales Point Manantee. And today I refer to those Creoles in Gales Point Manantee as the Maroon Creoles in Belize. As I refer to myself as a Maroon Creole living in Dangriga among the Garifuna people because I was not in Belize city where the colonial Hammer, for a better word, was down pressing you all the time. When the people settled in Gales Point, there was never run by a government, basically. There was always free and there was self-sustained and didn't have to depend on outsides. Unless you come to join the community and they accept you, that's how, you know, you would be in the community. The Maroon settlement in Belize, one of the oldest Maroon settlement, is Gales Point, Manatee. It was there for, uh, uh, we were brought here from the 1600s. And in 1798, after the Battle of St. Judges Key, the settlement expanded from Sibun to Sastun. And when the British were doing their survey to, to, to expand the settlement, to, 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 to I would say, um, have it as part of a British territory. The right there, they find out that Gales Point, they had a, pop a population there, they didn't know that existed there. I am originally from Gales Point, Manatee. Um, Gales Point, Manatee uh, is a Creole village that was founded in the late uh, 1600s to the early 1700s. Our ancestors originated from Nigeria. They were brought over here by the way of slave trade. 
they had brought the slave from the West African coast to Jamaica and from Jamaica they would clean them up and bring them to Belize and in Belize they, they had brought many different uh, ethnic groups from West Africa they had brought the Swahili, the Mandingo, the Zulu and the Igbos those were the most bigger crow that was come to Belize. They used to settle in a place in Belize city called Ibotong. Today they call that place Yabra and but its original name is Ibotong. And they settled along the swampy areas there in Belize city and we had field slaves and we had house slaves. The field slaves used to go out with the masters to cut lagood and mahogany. The mahogany was used to make furniture, dugout canoes, houses, and various crafts. The lagood was used, they used to extract the dye, the juice from it to make dye. Uh -huh, that's what the lagood was used for. The mahogany was exported back to England because we was brought here by the British. So the slaves was living on a very harassed condition. So the house slave decided that, you know, this was not really what we want to do. We, we always used to be free. We are free people. So they plan a revolt. And over a period of times, the uh, field slave, they check out the jungle, when they go out to cut the, the lagood and the mahogany and they figure which would be a nice area where they could escape and settle. And then the house slave, they gather information and stuff that they would need so when they make the, the escape, they could I mean, sustain themselves. So one night, the, the side was the right time, you know, it was near what they call Christmas time, they decide, you know, the master would be out playing and having fun. So they gather together and they kill five slave master and they escape up into the mountains. They track across swamps and rivers. So neither man nor dog could have find them. It was about 200 to 500 slaves. We don't know the exact number for sure. And they farmed two communities. They farmed the Freetong Shubun community and they farmed the Malantic community where they settled along the banks of the rivers. The only thing that they found though that was a bit difficult for them it was the language. Because when they, when they had also, when they brought the African slaves, they brought Nangos, Congos, Ashantis, Mandingos, Igbos, the Belize crowd or combination of all of the African, they had to speak a lingua franca so they could have, uh, understand one another. So they could have communicate and we don't continue to survive in, in, here in this place. And the, the, the language was English and African, which is now they call the Belize Creole. It is an English and African language. When the slave come to Belize, German was outlawed. German was outlawed. They didn't want the slave to play the drums because when they play the drums, they would get together. And when they get together, you know, they have more strength and power and they could communicate with the germs. So German was outlawed. So when the slaves escaped up into the mountain, they were allowed to remember some of the, the traditional rhythm that they had brought with them from Africa. In Gales Point, we keep a unique culture and tradition, the German tradition. We have several rhythms that is significant to Gales Point that is only played today in Gales Point in all of Belize. We have the Sambai rhythm. We have the Kunjai rhythm. And we 
have the sadunga. This rhythm here is a rhythm that I really love and I'm dedicating this rhythm here for the maroon in Jamaica and also the maroon in Central America and around the world. Yes, this is the samba rhythm. It's a very upbeat rhythm. Coming from Belize, my brother, if we have a message to say to the Akumpong Maroons from Dangriga Tongue, where I left to go and uh, say make a movie and document their independence that has also uh, given me a whole lot of strength that I must say since I come home. If we have one message of unity for them from Dangriga, from the uh, African peoples that's been defined as Garifuna, defined as Creole, and defined as many different people, including those that are defined as Maroons, yes. what would we say to our people? But I say we must know this world, because in order to operate in a system, you need to know the system. So we don't want to lose our roots going after knowing the system, but we need to find a balance. Because the reality is we're in another type of system, not the one that we originally had. This is another system. But our root is Africa. That is where the picture will come from. If we don't look to Africa, that answer will never come. Our Africanness, that we oneness. Yes. It's now the United Nations that reminds us of our African similarity in the world. In 2001. UNESCO proclaimed the Garifuna culture an intangible part of human and oral history. In 2003, UNESCO proclaimed the Maroon Town Maroons culture as an intangible part of oral and human history. This is Dangriga Town. Dangriga Town was created by the Garifunas that migrated from Honduras. This town, my town, Dangriga, is also known as the culture capital of Belize. The drums of our fathers stand right in the center of the town. It was pushed for by the late TV Ramos, whose bus stand in the middle of a square in Dangriga town. Well, this is a um, illegal sports bar, owned by one guy from um, Antobi, and I uh, work hard in the United States do a lot of promotion. Mike is one of my best friends, we grew up together, and uh, like I say, enough respect to everybody, just going to always be here trying to fight to take, up, take our little town back to Dangriga. The rest is history. African cultural similarity is profound in this world. My name is Michael Flores. I'm from Belize. I'm an African warrior chief. Initiated in the village of Sanka in the year 2000 in Ghana, West Africa. As a Pan-Africanist in the world, my aspirations are for the total unification of Africa under one banner, one people, one aim, as proclaimed by Marcos Garvey, one destiny. This movie is a dedication to the spirit of our African warriors that died fighting for their freedom. It's about understanding that everyone that came from Africa was not a serf or a slave. It's about understanding those that were sent to this continent were defeated African peoples. It doesn't matter what their ranking was, they were sold into slavery. We have been properly dispersed by our colonizer. There are some of us 
in the history of slavery that have been left with a strange legacy. That legacy is one of warriors. That legacy is one of us as fighters for our freedom. We never subjugated ourselves to the slave masters. We continually fought in every which way, by every which means, to attain our freedom. That is what a maroon is to me. That is what I am. That is my legacy. Tribute to fallen warriors of Akompong Tong. Tribute to fallen warriors of all maroon tongues. Tribute to fallen warriors in the African diaspora. Tribute to fallen warriors. In the spirit of our forefathers, Kwame Nkrumah, Ahmed Sekuture, Nelson Mandela, Patrice Lumumba, Malcolm X, Harriet Tubman, Kwame Toure, Angela Davis, Che Guevara, Paul Robeson, C.L.R. James, Marcus Mosiah Garvey, Bookman, His Imperial Majesty Aile Selassie I, Queen Mazinga, Shaka Zulu, Cardinal Green Warriors, tribute to our legacy as African people in the world. Them say money talk and the bullshit walk. Yeah. Feeling that them belly rasta stuff that up them art. Cause when the right time comes, they're gonna know what it's like to be poor, poor, poor. Once more about them money talk. And the bullshit one <laughs> Feeling on them belly I gon' stuff that up them rice Cause when the right time comes They gonna know what it's like To be poor, poor, poor I tell you my brethren, I know I'm gonna tell you Tell you my friends The life we used to live People I say we don't, we don't live again You let them Silver children, you let them take, take away the gold. Are you gonna stay there, my people, and let them take away our souls? But their money talk and the bullshit wow. Feeling that like them belly from the stuff that up them loss. You gotta know what it's like to be poor. Eh? Black man.